What is going on, Pats Nation? You guys already know who it is. Patriots Global here back with another video. And guys, the draft is this week. The time recording this, it's Tuesday. We are a couple of days away from the draft. And guys, make sure you don't forget, we, for the third straight year, are doing a live watch party here on the channel. You heard that right. Me, I'm going to have a special guest. You guys might know him. You might not. But you probably do if you follow pages on Instagram. I have a little special guest coming along. Along with my Patreon members. It's going to be me, them. We're going to be breaking this entire thing down from the start of the first round to the end of the first round. Guys, it's going to be a blast. Come on, come to the comment sections and join us or become a Patreon member and join us live on the stream. Like always, link to that. To be a Patreon member is in the link in the description box below. But guys, we're not there yet. We have a lot to talk about still involving the draft. But before we hop into that. Make sure you guys do subscribe to the channel for all of your New England Patriots news. This is your one-stop shop for everything involving the New England Patriots, whether that's free agent signings, trades, releases, everything that's involving the draft. We have a lot of mock drafts on here. We have other draft-related content on here also. Like I mentioned too, I'm going to be doing a live watch party for round one, and I will be doing recaps of each and every single one of the Patriots selections for the 2023 class like I usually do. But Pulls back a little bit. In this one, we are going to be talking about how the New England Patriots are meeting in the draft with the top prospects as edge rushers. Now, edge rusher is a bigger need than I think some people realize. And to me, it's probably a top three need overall for them. I think that this Patriots defense is really switching uh, their defensive scheme in terms of, hey, look, your identity used to be and elite secondary. And we do still have a very good secondary, but it's not what we used to have, okay? It's not in the days when we had Darrell Revis, Malcolm Butler, Stephon Gilmore, J.C. Jackson. We don't have those guys anymore. We have a lot of very good pieces. We have a lot of young guys. We don't necessarily know what they are, but we don't have a true overall number one guy. And I think that's because the Patriots are pivoting to more of a stout defensive line. We're used to the Patriots having a pretty good defensive line, but nothing crazy. But our defensive line was able to get to the quarterback because they had a few more seconds because our secondary was so good at covering receivers for a multitude of for a multitude amount of time, whether that was three seconds all the way up to even five seconds. That time the Patriots have had one of the best secondaries for the last several years. Now, since Gilmore has left, since J.C. Jackson have, has left, we've turned to a stout defensive line in terms of being able to apply pressure. And the big part of that came from having Matthew Judon, of course, but a guy opposite of Matthew Judon that was able to apply pressure and help collapse the pocket, put pressure on the quarterbacks, and make them throw a lot quicker. Like I said, that's given our guys in our secondary the ability to not have to cover as long. With that being said, edge rusher is coming up for the Patriots. Now, Matthew Judon is halfway through his uh, contract. He's going to be in his 30s once that contract is up. Do the Patriots resign him? Do they decide to go somewhere else? We don't know. But even if you want to look more in the present time, the guy that's been playing opposite a side of him, more specifically last year, the second half of um, the 2022 season was Josh Uche. And Josh Uche is in contract year. He's going to be a free agent at the end of this upcoming season, which puts question marks on, hey, who's that guy going to be yet again opposite of Matthew Judon? And who's going to be that guy who replaces Judon if you do end up um, letting him walk. So while edge rusher isn't necessarily a need for the Patriots right away, day one, they are in a position where they could use it now and they're definitely going to need it in 2024. So if we look at some of the edge rushers that they're meeting with, Nolan Smith from Georgia, Miles Murphy from Clemson, Lucas Van Ness from Iowa, and Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech. Now, they've met with a lot of different guys, of course. They've not just met with guys in the first round, but these are all edge rushers that are expected to go in the first round, and this makes a lot of sense if you're the Patriots, like I said, who could be in a position to need an edge rusher. This is something that could make a day one impact, but something that can impact the future as we go along. And maybe they say, if we get the guy we want here in the first round, maybe you trade a Josh Uche and pick up some more draft capital. And now you're able to acquire another tackle, another cornerback while getting your edge rusher, both to make a day one impact and a guy for the future. But like I said, they're meeting with every single edge rusher that has a first round grade on them, essentially. Again, Miles Murphy, Lucas Van Ness, Tyree Wilson. These are the top edge rushers for this class. 
which do you want to rank them? Which order would you like to rank them? That's totally up to you. Me personally, my favorite guy for the Patriots is Nolan Smith. Now, the only guy that they haven't met with in terms of edge rusher is Nolan Smith. I know some view him a little bit more as an interior guy. He is still technically an edge rusher. The Patriots don't have a shot at him. They're not going to get him. Ultimately, Will Anderson isn't even meeting with teams outside of the top 10. Patriots haven't met with him. So ultimately, I don't see it. But to start here with Nolan Smith, edge rusher is one of those positions where the Patriots value where you go to school very highly because of the competition. They want you to play um, a highly thought upon school with high end competition so that your transition to the NFL is a lot more smooth, right? Looking at Lucas Van Ness from Iowa, not as big of a school. Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech. Those are smaller schools that the Patriots don't necessarily love to go to. I mean, guys from like Georgia or guys from Clemson. Now, these schools make a lot more sense for the Patriots because the competition level that they had to go up against, these tackles, these quarterbacks, is going to be very familiar and a lot more of a, a smoother adjustment once they go to the NFL versus a guy who's going to have to take a bigger leap like a guy from a smaller school like we just mentioned. It's kind of like quarterback to me. It seems like when the Patriots have gone quarterback, especially as of late, they've liked to get those guys from bigger schools. So looking here at <clears throat> Nolan Smith. Now, first off, Nolan Smith here, he's probably considered the second or third best edge rusher on this list. Patriots hitting at 14, a lot of different things can happen. It all depends on how the board goes. Do multiple receivers go before Patriots at 14? Do three or four quarterbacks go for the, before the Patriots at 14? If that's the way that this goes, Nolan Smith very well could be there at 14. But if there's a go on edge rushers, then he likely won't be. <clears throat> He's a guy that's ranked usually going from 10 to 13th overall in the draft. PFF, though, does have um, the average draft projection for him going around 18. So it really is right around that Patriots mold to where he could go right before, but he very well could be there. A guy from Georgia, I think, would make a lot of sense for the Patriots in terms of schools. This is a guy that I think fits the mold of exactly what they want as an edge rusher, too. This is somebody who gets to the quarterback very efficiently, but that's not just his bread and butter, right? He's a very well-rounded edge rusher, and that's what the Patriots want. Why has Josh Uche played more for the Patriots this past year? More specifically, the second half of the year. <clears throat> it's not because we had injuries. It's because he finally started to become a more well-rounded edge rusher. Before this, Josh Uche they, was a guy they tried all over the field. They tried him at linebacker, stand-up linebacker. They tried him at edge rusher. They tried him in several different places, trying to figure out where he would best be utilized, and they couldn't figure it out because while he's a great edge rusher, he's somebody who's just going to pin his ears back and get to the quarterback. Other than that, when it, when it comes to containing the edge, stopping quarterbacks from scrambling on his side, extending plays, or run outside runs that are going his way, he was never able to stop it. And that becomes a liability because teams also can see that, hey, this guy's on the field. We know that he is a guy who's mainly going to rush us, not a guy who's going to be able to stop the run. So you see Josh Uche, you see Matt Judon here a couple of years ago, you're like, all right, let's run the ball towards um, Josh Uche's side rather than pass the ball because our quarterback's going to have one, two seconds max in order to throw the ball. Nolan Smith comes in here and he gives you that exact thing that you're looking for. A guy that can set the edge, but a guy that can also pin your ears and get to the quarterback. If the Patriots are going to take an edge rusher in the first round, it needs to be a guy that can play all three downs. I don't want a third down edge rusher who's going to come in on passing situations. I want a guy who can do it all and give us that um, compensation back on that 14th overall pick, whether we stay there or we trade down. In terms of grades, he had a pass rush grade of 74.9 and a run defensive grade of 82.4. It wouldn't shock me if the Patriots do value being able to stop the run just slightly more than being able to get to the quarterback because of their ability to add different blitz packages in order to apply pressure. He had a pass rush win rate, though, of 25.5%. Well above average, that was better than Josh Uche's win percentage this past year and has a run stop rate of 14.9%, which is also well above average. This guy is an absolute beast if the Patriots can get him there. Um, he was mainly utilized as a pass rusher more than a run defender, but still proved to be very efficient in both. Not a guy that in college put up a whole lot of sacks 
in 2020 only put up three, 2021 only put up seven, and then this past year only put up two, but he puts up a lot of pressure. 12 hurries this past year, 18 the year before, five quarterback hits this past year. He gets to the quarterback, but again, this is going to be your more well-rounded guy. He doesn't necessarily 100% excel in one area of the field, but again, that seems exactly like the type of guy that the Patriots would go for. I think he is a guy that has a lot of power to him, but won't necessarily collapse a pocket on his side. He'll apply the pressure, but if you're asking him to collapse a pocket, maybe he's a guy that you look to go elsewhere. Now, moving on here to Miles Murphy. Now, this is another guy I like out of Clemson. Kind of fits that mold still, like we talked about, of being more of a well-rounded overall edge rusher. I just think he's a little bit more of a pass rusher. And if the Patriots are looking for a guy who's a little bit more pass rush and not so much um, being able to stop the run, but still well-rounded, then this is the type of guy that I think you go for. But if you're looking for a guy who's going to be able to stop the run a little bit better, then apply pressure. Then, of course, you go for somebody like uh, Nolan Smith. But Miles Murphy here, he put up an overall pass rush grade of 78.5 this past year with a run defensive grade of 72.8. His pass rush win rate is still a little bit better than average, nowhere near um, what Nolan Smith is though. 14.3% with a run stop rate of 6.2% with a true pass set grade of 763 <clears throat> This guy has had some really good years in college. I think he's digressed a little bit just in terms of um, just how explosive maybe he's been over his last couple of years, but still put up an overall grade this past year of 79, six sacks this past year, nine the year before, five the year before that. This dude is very good, though, at applying pressure. 21 pressures this past year, 33 the year prior, and 12 in his rookie season there in 2020 with seven quarterback hits this past year and also two batted passes this past year. I think this guy also brings a lot of versatility that the Patriots could like. You can play him at outside tackle. You can play him over the tackle. He's played a little bit in the A gap, uh, but he's more of a B gap type of guy and even played a little bit <clears throat> off the ball. So he brings that dynamicism or dynamic aspect rather, excuse me, for the Patriots. So another guy that they've met with here. Now, Lucas Van Ness. Lucas Van Ness is a guy that I know a lot of you like. And it makes a lot of sense. I'm a big Lucas Van Ness fan myself. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just think that he's a third down player. That's the problem with Lucas Van Ness. If you're looking for somebody who's going to be able to stop the run, that's not Lucas Van Ness. And I think that the Patriots have gotten very good over the last two years at progressing their defense in being able to stop the run. And you look at the running backs they have to go up against. You look at the quarterbacks they have to go up against. And being able to contain the edge and stop the run when it comes to the edge has been very, very important for this team. And it was key last year for how good this defense was. Now, a little bit here about Lucas Van Ness. He had a pass rush grade of 74.3 this past year. A run grade of 80.9, but don't let that deceive you. Pass rush win rate of 18.8, a run stop rate of 5%, guys. Like I said, you can't always look at these grades and say, oh, well, his run defense grade is better than his pass rush grade. So that must be the story. That's not how that goes. Again, you can see from that run stopping rate, only 5% has big issues getting lost there in the run game, not being able to contain his edge. But in terms of being able to rush the passer and get to the quarterback, this guy has one of the biggest motors and biggest explosive play ability, I think, out of any other edge rusher. Maybe minus a guy like Will Anderson, but again, we're not talking about Will Anderson because that's not realistic for the Patriots. But I also think that Lucas Van Ness isn't so realistic for the Patriots in terms of, again, one, he comes from Iowa, but two, the Patriots like experience. They like experience in all of their players, and that's one of the biggest things for them is experience, and that's why maybe a guy like Broderick Jones at offensive tackle isn't also very realistic for the Patriots, but only two years of experience here um, <clears throat> from a collegiative level, 14 games in 2021 and 13 this past year. He took a big leap, though, this past year, which got him into that first round conversation. He's been utilized a little bit more as a pass rusher than he has as a run defender, but Again, still very similar, 271 in terms of snaps as a pass rusher and 203 as a run defender. Um, he had nine sacks this past year, 
for the year prior, six total hits this past year and 10 in 2021, 31 hurries, which is unbelievable. That should just showcase that pass rush ability to you and 14 in 2021 and had only one batted pass during his entire collegiate career. He's a guy that I think, again, fits that mold a little bit more of a Josh Uche, a guy who's just going to pin his ears back. I think he isn't speed to power. I think he's power to speed. I think that's something that the Patriots like also, but I just don't think this one's as realistic. He's more of a bull rusher at this point, and we've seen in the past guys who are bull rushers, whether that was Chase Winovich or Josh Uche to start, guys who just pin their ears back and go straight to the quarterback a lot of times collapse that pocket. So if it ends up being a run play, your guy is going to escape easily and at least pick up 10 yards, right? But that other problem is you pin your ears back and now you're creating a gap for your quarterback to scramble. So when you're playing guys like Josh Allen, even guys like Aaron Rodgers, who are now with the Jets officially, who has some scrambling ability, whether you play guys like Jalen Hurts, this upcoming season, or Patrick Mahomes, those guys are going to take off several times and it's going to be a, a complete liability. So that's why I don't think Lucas Van Ness is super realistic for the Patriots. It's not someone that I think makes a whole lot of sense, but he's someone I still like. And if they do select him, that pass rush ability is super, super fun to work with. Now, Tyree Wilson. Tyree Wilson coming from Texas Tech. He's somebody who originally was the second best edge rusher behind Will Anderson and has kind of started to fall off. He didn't have the combine that everybody um, originally thought that he was going to have. Still, overall, a good player, though. And if the Patriots could get Tyree Wilson, I do think that there is a lot of potential here. Um, his comp is to escaping me right now, linebacker last year who ended up going to the Packers. His name's totally escaping me right now, but I know you guys know exactly who I'm thinking of, and I know you'll let me know in the comment section below. Um, but that's essentially his comp, and it's going to bother me because now I'm thinking about it. But this is another guy who's a little bit more of a pass rusher than he is as a run defender, but still very, very good in both aspects of it. Now, he graded a little bit low in terms of run defense, but his numbers stand out to me. He comes from a smaller school. That's my only concern in terms of um, would the Patriots draft him or not? But if he's there at 14, this is a true guy that I'm thinking about drafting because, again, that ability was there. He shouldn't be there at 14, but because of his combine lacking a little bit, his draft stock has dropped a little bit. There's a real conversation for him to be there at 14. He put up an overall pass rush grade of 79.9 with a run defensive grade of 72.8, but he had a pass rush win rate of 23.3, and get this, a run stop rate of 10%. Those are two very high, well above average numbers. And yeah, maybe that pass rush win rate is a little bit lower than a guy like um, Nolan Smith, but again, still very good in terms of pass rush and very, very good, even better than Nolan Smith in terms of being able to stop the run. I think this is a very, very well-rounded guy and it fits that mode again of, you know, somebody who, who fits that bill who can stop the run for the Patriots, but again, can still apply that pressure very, very effectively. And he's put up some pretty decent statistics. Also, he put up eight sacks this past year, six the year prior, 10 quarterback hits this past year with five in 2021, 32 hurries this year and 26 this past year. This guy is an absolute monster. <clears throat> uh, do, do, do. Saying that six foot six, also 275 pounds. This guy makes a whole lot of sense. He's also very versatile. He can play edge. He can play at stand-up. He can also play a little bit on the interior, too, which I think is something that the Patriots would really like. They need a little bit of help of outside linebacker, too, so maybe he's a guy that they put in there a little bit. His biggest issue is technique, and that's something that the Patriots can easily coach out. I don't think that's something that they're overall too worried about. Um, but that is the top edge defenders that the Patriots are meeting with. If I had to list the guys that I would most like for the Patriots, it would go Nolan Smith, Tyree Wilson, Miles Murphy, and then Lucas Van Ness. Those are your top four guys that the Patriots have met with that are first round projections. But tell me in the comment section below, what are your list of those four edge rushers in order from one to four that you would like to see the Patriots target? Let me know in the comment section below. Do you think that the Patriots should target an edge rusher? Also, let me know in the comment section below. And if not, who should they go with? 
The draft is right around the bend, guys, and we have a lot of good stuff coming up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for all of your New England Patriots. And also, leave a like on this video, guys, because it really, really helps me out. Tells the YouTube algorithm you're liking these videos. And they say, hey, we'll suggest you to other Patriots fans. So, really help me out, guys. But without further ado, I appreciate you guys for watching. And go, Pat.